I just want to read from uh, Luke chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone, that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that it delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for a read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Elias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it to the minister and sat down. And his eye, all eyes of all of them were in the synagogues were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the glorious words, the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said unto them, He will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a true, many widows were in Israel in the day of Laius, where the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine throughout all the land. But unto none was them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city in of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. I just stop here. 
But the point I want to make today is that uh, the power of the Word of God um, in regards to um, our obedience to Jesus Christ. And um, many times people um, look at um, God as someone up in space. And we fail to see him as the word that is spoken out of his mouth. And, you know, um, I believe our words made up our souls. Because when someone dies, all that remain of that person is the words that the person normally speak. You know, um, you may have a lot of material things, or you may have a lot of friends, but no one will remember you by the material things you have for a long time. But they will remember your words. They will remember the words that you take to your heart. They remember your deeds. They remember, uh, so that's your soul. That's the entirety of your being. And so I just want to lay the foundation just to say that the word of God is God. That's right. And people tend to be looking at God as this being in the universe. Yes, he is. He has a shape. He has a body. But he's not isolated from us. He's not isolated from us. His word is nigh unto us. Even in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Even on our lips. The power of the word of God needs to become alive and become active in us, through us. And so, I just want us to look at this in a different way this afternoon. Just to look and see how Jesus himself, who came as the living word, as John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same word was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by the word that was made. And there was nothing that was made that, was, that wasn't made that was made um, except the word. Because we know that in him, the word was life. And the life in him was the light of so, Alfred, the life that, the light that is in the word of God gives you life. You and I will only walk in darkness if we don't have the word of God. Yeah, I mean, definitely, if we don't, we, in the absence of light, we said this before, and we'll keep saying it, in the absence of light, there can only be darkness. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's important to walk in the light, and that is to walk in Jesus Christ. That's right. Now, well, let's look at what Jesus did speak. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, he returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, first, we need to understand something that Jesus had the Spirit of God. And when someone has the Spirit of God, remember, I think it's in Isaiah chapter 11, mm. when he said, a stem will come forth from Jesse and the Spirit of the Lord will be upon him. So this same Holy Spirit that was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah that would have come on Jesus, he is on him. So this same Spirit, he was filled with this Spirit, right? He was filled with such anointing of God. So he had that spirit. And let's look. Well, I mean, I'll read it anyway because mm. you're quoting it, which is good. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Yes. Now, we know that all of this spirit was on Jesus Christ. Um, see, we are spirit and we are made up of, we have a body. We are more spiritual than we are physical. We're made up of body, spirit, and soul. Okay? 
the Spirit of God was, Jesus came as a man, but he was God, right? He was filled with such, the Spirit of God, right? And uh, that Spirit of God is God's character, is total obedience to God. You know, sometimes, you know, um, when you're in the man church, you know, sometimes you think that if you have the Holy Spirit, you make up a lot of noise and you, you be emotional and all of these things. And, you know, that's not what the spirit, the entirety of the spirit is all about. Well, yeah, because people are often are suggesting to people that they need the spirit of God so they've got power for service. But we're not just talking about the Sunday church service. Mm. We're talking about what it means to serve God, what it means to have a relationship with what God. What it means so, to come, what it means to fight sin, to be to overcome sin because that's what the spirit of god does the spirit of god was on jesus and he was filled with the spirit of god and then being filled with the spirit of god now is the time for tests so the holy spirit led him to the wilderness well i think it's important that if you're filled with the holy spirit that you will be led by the spirit now many people think they're filled with the holy spirit but they lead themselves they do what they want of course how they want where they want absolutely Jesus was filled and he was full of the Holy Ghost and he returned from Jordan and as you were just about to say, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Into the wilderness. And we know they and, that and are led we, by the Spirit of God. That's right. And they are know, the sons of God. Of course. Absolutely. So we know that is by going into the wilderness, mm-hmm. the wilderness is a place of dry, it's dry, it's not like um, out of the wilderness, you you don't have water. There is a little place hidden away. It's called the oasis, but it's all sand. It's filled with snake. It's filled with all vipers. It's filled with animals. Um, sometimes you get the wind, and the wind blew the sand. You can have a desert storm. The wilderness is a very harsh place. It's not a nice place. So we know that Jesus was was led. To a place that wasn't very nice. It wasn't a comfortable place. It was an uncomfortable place in the flesh. And so we know that as a man, your flesh needs to die. And so Jesus went to that place where he was dying. And that's where the Spirit is leading us every day. When we are led by the Spirit of God, we, we is leading us into an environment that is hostile to our flesh. Is it a place of um, separation, but that separation that brings you closer to God? It's not a separation as in, I don't want to be around anybody or I don't want anybody around me, but God is saying to you, come, come to me. You alone alone come to me. Forget your materialism. Forget your fleshy pride. Forget your fleshy lust. Let my spirit draw you now into a place of, it seems as though there is nothing there where it seems as though you are famished you won't have a drink you won't have many clothes you won't have it's not a a a prosperous place to be but come because i the lord your god i'm there is that what the spirit of god is doing leading jesus to a place where god is though to a person they think that's a wilderness god is in that wilderness absolutely Absolutely. So we know that, yes, as you said, it's not a very comforting place. It's a place that is so hostile to the flesh. But God is in there. God is in there. And it's the same thing that God did to Moses when he said, Moses, come up to me. And Moses went up in the mountain to God. And God wants every individual to come up to him personally. And... um, he had to leave his family. He had to leave everybody. And he had to go up to God. Because when God finds some man, a man or a woman that will just forsake everything and will just spend time with him, God alone, and you can actually save your family or your community or your country. God is just basically looking for a man that will actually come up, come up on the mountain and get his law Somebody who wants to meet him. To meet him. And when when you get the law of God, because as Moses got the law of God, it was written 
on the tablets. But what God want to do, He want to write the law, of, uh, 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 His law, on our hearts. And when He write that law on our heart, then we don't have to ask everybody what the Lord is saying, because the law of God would have been on our heart. And so, yes, He returned from Jordan, and He was led into the wilderness. And as we describe the wilderness, what it was. He's been 40 days and tem been tempted by the devil for 40 days. And in those days, he eat nothing. Now, with this is a parallel because his eating could be, of course, he would be hungry if he um, was out in the wilderness and not had anything to eat physically. On the other hand, he would be hungry if he hadn't got anything to eat spiritually. Can I just say, yeah, to hold that point because it's right. We mentioned something about God putting his laws and writing into our hearts and his mind. And I was mm. also going to say that sanctification means to be set apart. That's right. For God mm. and to God. Mm. To be sanctified. So going to the wilderness is being separated. something that we all must be led by the Spirit into. There has to be that that process That's has right. to happen. That process must take place. And I would just read from Ezekiel 36 because we talked about God writing his laws in our hearts and his mind. And he mm -hmm. said in verse Ezekiel 36, verse 23, he said, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned, profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will then will I sprinkle clean water upon you mm. and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you mm. and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Absolutely. You see, it's a work of God. So Jesus was in that process of um, being separated. Not just from the physical yeah, but from hunger, the, but yeah. also there was a spiritual hunger you were saying. There Absolutely. Was, there was something more than just wanting to eat breakfast and lunch and dinner he was hungering and thirsting for God. For righteousness. And for righteousness. He, and, and when you are hungry and thirsting for righteousness Jesus said you will be filled and you will eventually be led away from the synagogues. So oh. Jesus noticed that he was in an environment where there was a great apostasy yeah. and he wanted God and he could not have found him in the synagogues he couldn't find them, the, the God, the true God around the elders of Israel. And so he had to, you know, um, fulfill the righteousness of God. So he got baptized and then the Holy Spirit came on him and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then, um, you know, then he went to the wilderness. The Holy Spirit now led him in the wilderness. So he was continuing to obey every word. That was written in the book. Well, there's definitely something significant here because it would seem obvious that mm. if you go into a wilderness and you haven't eaten anything for 40 days and nights, you will be hungry. But then I noticed something that it wasn't only because he was hungry. As we go into the temptation, the devil didn't only just offer Jesus food. He also began to offer him other things that he seem to be hung what the devil seems to be offering Absolutely. to everybody there's a certain hunger and emptiness a desire within the heart of man exactly there's something you see, more many people look at the scripture and they put it in the physical to say yes it's it only is, it is a mm. hunger for food but there is a there are a lot of things that we are hungry for which come against the word of god and jesus and, is saying no and, but we're going to get to that. Yeah. We, we're going to get to all of that. But it's interesting because inside of what you're saying, 
outside of just eating and drinking and doing about going about your daily life business there is something spiritual taking place in your life and it's obvious because god has placed his spirit within you absolutely now being so he'd been tempted 40 days and afterward he was hungry now remember that within the 40 days there's a lot of temptation that he had gone through being tempted of the devil being 40 days tempted of the devil 40 days the devil was on his case mm. it wasn't a, a one shot thing it was one thing after another it was coming at him to to doubt god it was coming at him to curse god and die it was coming at him in every direction it i mean joseph was probably ill and was about to die and you know there would be lots of things it was coming at him whether or not joseph was his father or god was his father it was coming at him am i a son of god or am i a son of the world i know that um, all of these things had happened when the three wise men brought me uh, gifts and it's just like i knew there was something special on the inside of me but is it really true and all of these things were in his mind. I believe it was there to, to kind of be uh, succumb to the world and to his parents on the world in the world and his family background, and then knowing that he is a son of God. And another hand, so there was a fight that was actually taking place, a spiritual fight of identity. And you can see it when you go further down that Jesus said unto him, if Thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. Now, as I said earlier, there was a fight of identity. And you can we can look into this because um, Satan knew he was a son of God. He heard John the Baptist said, you know, this behold is my the Lamb of behold God. the Lamb of God who came to say, take a the sin of the world. And, and this is my testimony. beloved son yeah, in whom I am well pleased. He knew because he was traveling with he was watching Jesus since the day Jesus was born. He knew who Jesus was. He knew because he placed in Herod's mind to destroy. And he destroyed every young boy. At the, uh, I think it's right. the age of two. Yes. And up to four. He killed them all. He did because his best he to try to, to find try the to, Messiah. To find him. the Messiah and okay. kill him. And he was watching Jesus who is a sacrifice to save mankind. That Satan was watching him. He watched him when he went up to the synagogues. He watched him all the way to when they flee to, uh, to, to, to Egypt. Egypt. He watched him as all the way. Galilee, as, as he grew up in Galilee. He, he was watching him. He was watching him. And now, after he was about to do the step, he took that step of obeying righteousness. And he heard this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Then after that, the devil said unto him, If thou be a son of God. Now, that is kind of an ins insinuation just to say, Who are you? And I think every, every Christian at some point in their life, and many times we get this in our hearts, are you a son of God or are you a son of the devil? Now, and, 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 and this is quite interesting because um, when you don't know who you are, you tend to act a certain way and think a certain way. You tend to behave a certain way because where the mind goes, the mind follows. If your mind is all blocked up with the world, and if you are not uh, careful to know who you are in Christ, you will question, am I the son of God? Well, and you will behave inappropriately because when you're dealing with the devil and unrighteousness, there's a couple of things you mustn't do. One of the things is, you must never forget that the devil is a liar. And that all that he says is a lie. Even if you think that he's telling you some truth, it's a lie. But notice, the, de the devil didn't say, um, you are not the son of God. It's just an if. It's just a, 
Why so you question? It, it, it's why like, do you doubt? It, 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 it's so a seed of doubt. Yes. And of questioning. And it is the same thing he did to Eve. Exactly. He, he, he said, he what, 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 a he, conversation. And said, okay, of saying did, to her, did God has really God said, said? He said, has God said? And it's, it's like, and you have to understand the serpent is not going to come out. It's coming out with hmm. partway truth. He's yeah. saying, it's a mixture. It's not true, or it's not saying it's a lie. It's not saying it's a lie. But he's saying, is it? There's something about this. Uh, and there's something about you. You need to que- question what you are into. Are, are you sure? Yeah, because it's obvious that he can see that it's obvious that Jesus is hungry and he wants something to eat. So the devil is saying to him, of course you're hungry. Of course you want to eat. If you are a son, if you are God's son, you can command stones to be bred. But the fact of the matter is, mm. when you are serving God and you're living for God, you should not use what you think is your own credibility, your own uh, status for selfish need. For yourself. Well, basically, absolutely. Your flesh, your flesh should not be in the way at all. You have to think. Even though he was hungry yeah. and he needed to eat, he yeah, should not still yeah, do something like that in order to for, make him eat something. To get his need. He shouldn't have his... You see, because we're all about trying to get our needs met. We're not... You know, we're not... We're not this is how the devil is deceiving us sometimes, deceiving people. He's saying to them, you're hungry. You should eat. And if you're God, if you really are a son or daughter or child of God, why aren't your needs being met? Why don't you get your needs met? Because if you're God's child, you can turn stones into bread. But look at, look at the parallel between Eve and yes. Jesus because Satan uses the same tactic. With Jesus, he said, if you are the son of God, he said, just if, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. With Eve, he said, has God really said you should not eat from this tree? Well, and there's something very interesting, isn't there? That Jesus had been led by the Spirit to go into the wilderness. He was not there primarily for himself or of himself. He was led by the Spirit. So why would he then want to command something that he'd not been led to do or think or feel? Absolutely. And what I want to what the, the, yeah. hold that point. What I want to draw to our attention as well, that's a very good point, is this the parallel between Eve and Jesus, it is so um it is so uh you know real because it would have to be because Jesus really come to undo the work to undo that the, the devil word did of, so so via Adam and Eve so had, the devil would had, have to had, had, had the Adam way. and Eve said it is written man shall not live by bread alone because God said to them eat from the tree of life you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the day you do you shall surely die now this is the same food, Alfred, I'm talking. That's why I said we must look out of the physical. This is more spiritual. Because, look, Satan said unto him, If thou be the son, the last verse in verse 2 said, Afterward he was hungry. Right? Then the devil said to him, If thou be the son of God, come on this stone to be made bread. In other words, with Eve he said, did God really say you should not eat from... You can read it. Yeah, I will. I was, read it. I was did God say... Did, did God say... So it brings in doubt. Notice, it brings doubt into Jesus. It wants to bring doubt into Jesus' mind as well as he wants to sow doubt into Jesus' mind and he wants to sow doubt into Eve's mind. In the same way he wants to sow doubt into our minds. Into our minds. So we see, the thing about we need to understand, just read the I'm part. Gonna, I'm just going to read it. It's only six verses anyway, so yeah, yeah. let me just read it and then we'll get that part of the story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the subtle, field. Subtle, you know. 
which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of the tree, of every tree of the garden? So he said, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He's asking her a question. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, so the eating we're talking about is that which you eat with the pleasure. It's, it's yes. a soul that have you want to eat the pleasure that makes you wise. He wants you to eat wisdom. He wants you to eat uh, to to make you wise. So, because notice, Jesus said, Satan said, well, before he got to that, he said, being 40 days of the devil, being Jesus had been 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days, he did eat nothing. That's right. He didn't eat anything. He, so, I, I must, he didn't I eat must, anything. even though, yes, he was hungry physically, but I think the whole point is more deep down is a spiritual hunger because when you are sanctified and you're separated unto god and you're seeking his face there are so many worldly things that you have to put away now i don't i'm not saying it to say that afterwards you take all those worldly things back up no and you continue i'm saying jesus didn't eat anything so we're talking from a physical and a spiritual point of view so he wasn't eating lies he wasn't eating deception absolutely he wasn't eating lust he wasn't eating pride he wasn't eating those things he wasn't putting those things into his body and consumed by them and it said he was hungry exactly so we know that adam and eve they ate the lies of satan yep. so jesus refused to eat the lies and going on fasting we know is not to eat lies is not to eat pride is not to eat the things of the world is to be separated to god to eat the tree of life yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely so we can say that point is really clear and so uh jesus answered him which adam and eve should so this is what causes the problem in the universe right here because Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. What is written, Alfred? What yeah. is written? You see, the thing about it, that a lot of people don't know what is written. It's, what is written? It see, is written. You see, Adam and Eve received a commandment from God. God gave them his word. His word was, I don't want you to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the word of God to them. So in, in our life, what God is saying, I don't want you to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the way of the world, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the, the way that man thinks. And notice, we can observe the different temptations that Jesus had gone through and what Satan has said to Eve to understand how we no, must not conduct our life. Even to the point where we must not misunderstand what it means to be a son or daughter of God. We must, Absolutely. Not, we must not misinterpret what that means. So the devil said to Eve, you'll be like God. God knows that you'll, be, you'll, know, that you'll know good and evil and you'll be gods. You'll be like him. You'll be gods. But they had already been made in the image and likeness of God. So they should have been content with the fact that Internally and externally, they represented God. You notice Satan wants them to wanted them to um, become his his daughters, well, and so that's what yes, you and I yes. we will become the children of Satan if we obey yeah. Satan. Because, because you know that if we draw away from the Word of God, the Tree of Life, 
we are now going to become like Satan, like eating, because it's the very same thing Satan did. I will exalt myself above the throne of That's God, right. and God just struck him out of heaven. So well, he, he wants us now, who are made into the image and the likeness of God, so Jesus to Christ. exalt ourselves mm -hmm. above God to say, I am eating from the tree of knowledge. I have knowledge of my accolade, of my color. I, I, I am... You know, look at me. I am important. All oh, the reverence and the other. As the son of God, I should do this. As a son of God, I should do that. I should get I have this right. I, 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 I should get so much accolade and height and so much esteem. But he says to Jesus, if, if you're the son of God, command. And the fact is, you already said something. That in the beginning was the word in John 1. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So men that are walking by the word has to stumble. So that's why when you get to this part where you're just about to read from chapter 4, Jesus then shows, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, which means that in him was light, and the light in him was, a, was life, and the life in him was a light of men. So, you and I weren't created to live by bread, bread alone, alone oh, by the things of this body, of this flesh, that the flesh need, the bread of the flesh, the bread that makes sustain this life, for, which, which is, must be the word of God. Which, which the, the bread of the flesh is the works of the flesh. Yep. It's like you will sit down before a television and you will feed your soul with lust. You'll feed your, your mind with a lot of wrong thoughts. Well, You're let's face eating. It. We, You're live eating. In a, we live in a world full of temptation. Of course it is. And it's always shown to you to say, come on, sin. Come, come on. It's offering on a platter do every day. Wrong. Come of on. Course. Do something that you want for yourself now. But... The truth of the matter is, you can't even live by eating and drinking alone. It has to be the word of God. Because remember, we talked about this from being the perspective of not just physical, but spiritual as well. And it's obvious that Jesus was truly hungry. He hungered. But was it just the hunger of the food? Or was it the hunger for the word of God? And we realize through what he says, no, I, I've got a hunger for God's word. I'm not going to just turn stones into bread i can live by every word of god you see that hunger as we notice it is a hunger for, for the flesh the um yes self-satisfaction self-satisfaction but jesus was hungry for god yes he was because um being god and being tested tempted by drawn by the spirit 40 days to be tested by the devil as for human being, right? Is the place where you are, you can be in your spiritual life when, yes, you are hungry. I found there are times when I am really hungry for God. And um, I can be at a place where I, I so need God. I so need Him. That um, nothing else can satisfy that hunger. And as David said, I will not give rest to my eyelid until I find a place for God. You are hungry. Your spiritual man is hungry. It is starving. It needs something to fulfill it. There's a spirit that is drawing. There's a baby that is growing on the inside of you. And it, it, it is craving for the word. Your soul, your soul, your soul is, is hungry. Empty. It's, it's empty hungry. for God. So Jesus was in that place. Because don't forget, it was an age of apostasy. See, they know. all had fallen away. They all had thought that Moses' law, they all had forgotten that Jesus would come. And now he came and he saw all the violence and all the crime was there. He was there and they could not welcome him. They, they, he was hungry, he was isolated, he was alone. Can bread and water satisfy the hunger of your soul? No, not those physical. Your soul is not a physical thing. Your soul absolutely not. is spiritual. Your soul is from God. You, can't, you, couldn't, you couldn't put rice and peas and chicken. You couldn't put fish and chips 
into your soul to make it live. You can only put the word of God into yourself to feed your soul. There's a place in the Bible where Jesus um, went to, I think, um, it's a woman of, when he meet the woman, and um, you don't have to turn there, but when he meet the woman at the well, and he went, the disciples went to buy fish, and after they came back, he said, um, to Master, here's a fish. And he said, No, I'm, I'm eaten. I'm not hungry. And he said, um, who, buy, who buy him food? Who buy, buy him food? And Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of God. So we know that the hunger that Jesus is talking about is not the f- bread and the fish like the disciples that were, they, they weren't spiritually strong enough to see that, are spiritually wise enough to see that the, the, the food that Jesus eat is not bread and fish. The food that makes Jesus satisfy is when a woman actually got the truth. I think it's important that I read it. I know it's a double <laughs> but I, I do want to read it because it really yeah. does bring out. It says, go ahead, go ahead. in John chapter 4, verses 31 down to about 35, I'd say, it says, in the meantime, while his disciples prayed him, in the meantime, while his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. This is just after the conversation with the well. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Have any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Absolutely. So we know from this point of view that the meat that Jesus eat and the hunger that he experienced, it wasn't a hunger of bread and fish. It wasn't the hunger for the body. It wasn't the physical manifestation. It wasn't the physical hunger. It's the spirit of God. He was hungry. For the word of God. He was thirsty. He was in a, a place of desperation. For the spirit. The soul was hungry. The, the spirit has come in. God's spirit come in such a force on his soul. And his yeah. soul need to come up to that standard. And when you look at the spirit of God. The soul is hungry. He said, oh my God. I need to come up to that level. Yeah. And so he was really hungry. And um, you know. Jesus said unto it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of God. So he's saying, the bread alone is this physical food that you're trying to offer man. This get rich quick scheme, this this attitude of if wanting of material God, things. Use your power to do to, something. To do Be something powerful. to satisfy my lust. Now mm. Jesus is saying, no. And when you look into the church in Christendom now, what you see is this. Bring me some money. And I will give you your needs. It's like, pay me the tithe. And I will, you know, God will bless you. And God is not a, a scheme that, that you, you know, a slot machine that you put in and you get something out. It's not like that. What, 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 what he's saying is this, is that what is written, Alfred, what is written is what you and I need to follow. Nothing else. Isn't it interesting that the Spirit of God leads Jesus to a place where there is nothing. He takes him to a place where there's wilderness. nothing. He takes him into a wilderness and there's nothing there. There isn't anything there. Nothing at all. The only thing that was there mm-hmm. was the Word of God. Absolutely. The only thing that was there was the commandment of God. The only thing that was there in the wilderness was what has God said? You see, what has God ma- told many times you and I are in, we are in situations where, uh, of course, there is nothing there. There is no friend. There is no uh, fellowship. There is nothing there. And it's just, you know, you may be in a place in Africa. And when you're even by yourself, when there is, you're at work. There is nothing there. There's no technology. And I'm telling you, if you don't have God's word on the inside of you, you starve. There are many times it's because I have, have to be meditating on the scripture that I know. And I have to speak it out loud. 
to be to get my soul fed with the word of God and have to be thinking. So, as I said, when everything has gone, when it's a wilderness, when it's a desert, and when the desert storm is blowing, if you don't have God's word, you will die. You shall surely die. Because I'm telling you, Satan will want to come to your rescue. And he wants to say, why not turn? There are some stones there. Remember, you are a son of God, and you can turn them, and you can make bread. You can satisfy your heart. It's the same thing they're doing with, and you can interpret this as um, the heart of men, which is so such a stone. Stony heart. Stony heart. There is no conviction. There's no repentance. There's no remorse over the sinfulness, the sinful nature. And you are now saying, Turn it now into bread. No, you can't turn a heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh without repentance. It takes repentance to break that heart, as what he says in Ezekiel 36, to break that heart, and then God will now write his law on it. But if your heart isn't smashed up like how Moses break up the first stoniness, it represents... The heart of men that is stony. So you have these preachers that goes around and they're preaching to stony hearts. Right? And he's saying, take up that stone. Look, that stone. Jesus, he said, not one stone will left on another of this temple that man is built. Well, we read that from... That will not come down. What I think was really touching, because that's right, that when we read about from Isaiah chapter 11, we talked about the spirit of the spirit of God that was upon Jesus, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of the <laughs> eyes, neither reprove Hallelujah. after the hearing of his ears. And of course we could go on, but in that particular verse, but I'm just saying, when you fear God, when the fear of God is upon you, you don't want those material things for yourself. And you don't make decisions based on what you, you see, see or what you hear. Or what you hear. You make them based, based on, the on the word, word of God. God. So Jesus <laughs> is doing this now. He's saying, you know what? And you see, the thing about it, we must do this. It is written. This is, and this morning I was just saying, I must live by what is written. We have to live by the word of God. The book, because it's the same book is going to be open. It's the word of God. I'm saying, guys, you are looking to go to heaven. And heaven is the word of God. Heaven is whatever is written. That's heaven. Whatever that is in him. Because the book is going to open. And those who name are written are those who have experienced the word of God, have the word of God develop in them, and and allow the word, obey the word of God, tremble at the word of God. They have right to enter into the tree of life. Let me tell you something. We we want people want to go to heaven, but they don't know what they're talking about. How can you go to a place where you don't have the word of God, where you don't live in and on and through and by? The word of God. You follow the Lamb wherever He goes. The word, whatever is written in this book, that's what we need to live by. See, when you fear God, His word is above and over your life. Absolutely. You, you're not just trying to live your life for yourself. God is not just a uh, pretend God that you go to a place to worship and then afterwards you do whatever you want to do. When you know the true and living God, you will obey his word, you will fear his word, you will know his word, and you will live his word. Absolutely. So we know that the bread that we need to eat from, the soul, the mature soul need to eat, the word is God. the word of God. Amen. Jesus came and said, Moses, the father, your father, ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. Mm. Uh, 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 in the wilderness. Yeah. So you see how... You know, I have to just praise God because when you look at his wisdom, Alfred, and see how he um, practiced that which Jesus is about to do, 
because he brought them into the wilderness That's right and he fed them with manna and it's just to it's just a foreshadow of what is yet to come and then Jesus now went into the wilderness he ate nothing and he ate nothing and he said I don't need to eat nothing but myself that's right because even if I was to eat all I have is is if what I, is written even if I ate manna because we know it for a fact that the children of Israel ate manna and they, and died, they died in, that died wilderness. in the wilderness Jesus is saying even if I was to eat if I don't actually live by the word of God if I don't eating food and drinking is not going to save me right now I need God's word do you know what he said your ancestors eat manna in the wilderness and they die. He said the bread that the Father is giving you is, is such of a kind that is, it, when you eat it, he said, I am the bread of, of life. life. Right. So he's saying even the bread of life itself, mm. himself, went into the wilderness and was eating from himself. Yeah, yeah, he, was, he was feasting. He was feeding on the, the word, word of, God. of God, what was written. And how, why, why are we eating other words? Hmm. <laughs> it is written. What is written? Man shall not live by bread alone. But by, by every, every word. word. Not just, not just a part, you know. Not just good and evil. Good today and evil tomorrow. Is every day the word. Every word of God. And then the devil take him up. He didn't stop. Into a high mountain. And show him all his, the kingdom of the world. In a moment of time. And the devil said unto him. All this power I'll give unto thee. And all the glory of them. For that is given unto me. And whosoever I will I give it. If thou therefore will worship me. All is thine. Satan really makes seeing Jesus is stupid because when you think of it, it really, really would be dumb. Because if you worship someone, why would why would you get all the power anyway? If you are going to worship someone, he's gonna be higher than you. <laughs> but you know what? Everybody knows that the devil is supposed to be below them, underneath them. They know exactly. that the world. They know that the world is supposed to be below us, beneath us. But yet so many people who have professed to know Jesus Christ want the kingdoms of the world. <laughs> want the power. Want the glory. They want it. So Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. You see, I just love the word. He uses the word of God It all is the time. written. What is written? Thou shalt worship the Lord Thy God and Him only shalt thou serve. You see, the thing is, this, when, this is a commandment that to be a man, this is what it is. People are running to be important, to be famous, to have accolade, to have respect, to be noticed, to be sufficient, to even be recognized by the world. Many believers, people who say they're Christians, wanting to be well-known, wanting to be accepted. But Jesus was saying, actually, all of that which you're offering me, none of that means anything in comparison to worshipping God and serving Him alone. And heaven is for those who worship God and serve Him alone because there no, is, he, is, he is in the midst of everything. If He's not in the midst of it, He's not a part of it at all. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve Absolutely. God with anything else. God is a God that you serve alone. Now, as we, just before we move on, I just want to read out from um, John chapter 6 when we talked about the, Jesus being the bread of heaven. Mm -hmm. And it said, um, verse 31 of chapter 6 says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it, is, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Mm. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, mm. but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, 
and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. You see me, but you still haven't believed. Absolutely. Absolutely. <sighs> so Satan wants us to worship him over worshiping the true God. And we need to, when we work to worship God, is to first eat the bread of life because you need food. Right? Well, if you can't identify that, mm. that, that true worship is in the Word of God, ah. true worship is reading, abiding, obeying, remaining, remaining, trusting in the Word of God. That is true worship. That is true that, worship. That is true worship. Absolutely. And you can only do that to God and God alone. It's got to be to Him and for Him alone. I have found out and I'm beginning to love the Word of God when God started to show me what true worship is. I started to love God's Word because I realized that I cannot worship outside of His Word and I cannot obey Him outside of His Word. Because I know that Satan is standing at the door of my heart and his desires to have me. But I know I must rule over it. And the ruling over it as a fighting man like David is to fight with the word of God. The sword of his mouth is the word that comes out of the mouth of God. This is what I use to destroy the enemy of sin. That is lurking at my heart door. Is God's word. And I have to dwell. And I have to abide. And remain in there. And cry out to God and say. This is what I want. And every day I have to eat it. And oh. you become what you eat. If Eva just said to the devil. God said. That we mustn't eat. God said we're not doing it. And I'm not doing it. I don't. Who are you anyway? We are in charge here. Me and Adam are the ones in charge. So, thank you for your advice, but we obey God. But today, most Christians, they want to talk with the devil. They want to have a conversation with the devil. They want to try to reason with the devil, and then they end up in sin. Because you shouldn't talk or reason or have a conversation with the devil. He's beneath you. The devil he's is below the you. The devil is he's, like some salespeople. He's not in charge. He does not have rule and lordship over the earth. But God has placed that within you mm. to follow Jesus. The devil is like some salespeople. Sometimes I'm at the shop and it's like they call. And, oh, I want to speak to the manager. And when you when you go there and start to talk to them, they said, oh, um, oh, Mr. Gordon, can I have this? And, um, you know, you, you, you and, and if I entertain that conversation, I can easily fall into their trap. But if I say, listen, we don't do this and uh, we are all right with what we're doing. And um, thank you. Bye bye. And I don't even have to wait to hear what they have to say. I because they can take over your business easily. Of course, and by having problem. you advertise with them and doing that and take over every profit you make. Yeah, and if you can take I, over your life, the devil take over your life, life. But if you let him, you have to put the phone down and say no. I am not interested. I don't even have to hear back what they have to say. But put it down. I have, I have nothing to do with it. But people want to pet sin. Yeah, because once the once 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 you tell the devil you're gonna only live by the word of God, he then tries to offer you other things. He now it's to you know draw draws your attention with oh, I'll give you kingdoms, I'll give you power, I'll give you glory, and then after that he turns around and then says to Jesus, "Okay, I can't get your worship, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do now." I'll take you to the temple. No, so he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and they shall bear thee up with their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. No, Jesus answered and said unto him, It is written, <laughs> same place, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. No, when I was reading this this morning, he actually. It, it really speak to me. Yes. Because there's a danger there, isn't there? Um, yes, it's, it's a very dangerous place. However, 
no, looking from the point of view, as I read before, and as I said in the foundation, that the word of God is God. And Satan was using the word of God and tempting God with God. He was using the same word that Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not, it is written, he was saying, for it is written, he shall give his angel charge over thee. Which it is written in the Psalms, yeah, Psalm that 21. he will give his angel charge over you to keep you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. But it does talk about he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And it does talk about, so the devil has a way to twist scriptures to make it in, at that moment seem relevant when you have to have the Spirit of God and be led by the Spirit of God to understand the Word of God, right? Well, because we have to accept the fact that people use the Scripture, but you must know the Word of God that supersedes the Word of God. Absolutely. There is an Old Covenant and there is a New Covenant. There, yep. is a, there is an Old Testament, there is a New Testament. There is things that are written in the Bible, though they are true, they do not relate or correspond to you in certain situations Absolutely. and in certain circumstances. And this is one of them. You can't throw yourself off of a building and no, say, you, you, You'll be tempting God. And say, God will protect me. No, you will you not put you'll yourself be tempting God. in harm's way and believe that God will come through for you. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. So you see, when I, when, when, you see this make it clear that the word of God is God. Because he was tempting. It wasn't the body of Jesus, you know. It's, it's a fact he was tempting the word of God. That's right. Notice Jesus put his, the word over himself. He wasn't saying, don't tempt me, Jesus. Because right. I am God. Even though that was true. But all Jesus was saying, he said, you are tempting the Lord your God. What? What is written? You are tempting it. Is, is you what I'm saying? What is written? What is written? You are you are you you are uh, polluting what is written, and it is written, "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God." Then the devil ended all his temptation and departed from him for a season. You see, we we talk about the Bible and interpreting the Bible, and there's a lot of people today who believe that they know and understand the Word of God. But they're not being led by the Spirit of God. There's a lot of um, devious people, wicked people, who use the Bible to manipulate, to control, to deceive, to lie. And that's the devil's way of working. Oh yeah, it's the devil working. He the tries way to too. use mm -hmm. the Word of God. But the reason why it's important that you pray and read the Word of God and that you know the Lord for yourself personally and that you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and that you are actually led by the Spirit of God is that nobody would deceive you. Absolutely. That nobody will lead you astray. <laughs> that nobody will tell you things and say, actually, this is written there in the Bible. Well, this part of the scripture that the devil tried to bring to Jesus, yes, it's partly written in the Bible, but there's a whole chapter that goes with it. Absolutely. It's within a concise place within Psalms 91. There's a, there's, there's a, it's not just the fact that there's a few verses written there. It's the fact that what is God really like? Do those verses really correspond to the type of God? Would God truly ever tell anybody to harm themselves in that way? Go up yeah. onto a high mountain and jump off, and then he would just send angels to lift you up. I doubt very much that God would do anything. Well, like that's that. what the devil wants to do. That's what he does to people. I mean, to kill them and take them to hell. <laughs> many people try to tempt God. They try to tempt God with their need. They try yeah. to tempt God with their desire. They try to tempt God with... Well, God has to come through for me. God doesn't have to come through for you. When you know God, when you trust God, when you believe in God, absolutely, you know he doesn't have to do anything because that's what makes him God. But the thing about it, you know, Alfred, is like when you are abiding in God, you just absorb, you just drink from God. You trust God. You don't have to. He said, because you he, trust said, him. he said, before you call, the answer is on his way. That's the thing with the word of God, I realize. I don't need to ask my earthly father 
for anything he knows to supply the needs. So what about my Heavenly Father? Why should I keep on asking him for all of these things? All I have to do now is abiding in him. And when you abide in God, then everything that is of God automatically come to you. You just need to be in the house, Alfred. Well, when you're in the house and your foot is around the table, when the meal is dished out, you will have to eat. <laughs> well, what I think is interesting, I'm just going to read verse 1 from Psalm 91, which is where the devil quoted from. It said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I'm just going to say this. If you're abiding in God's secret place and you're under the shadow of the Almighty, what would you be doing on top of a building thinking about <laughs> jumping off and angels saving you? You ain't, you ain't you're abiding, not, are you? You're not abiding. You're not, you're not actually... You're not, you, you've moved away from being under His presence. You would want to move away from oh, the, the shadow of the Almighty. Of the Almighty. Exactly. You know, the Psalm, John 15 said, um, if he abide in me and my word remain in him. You see, it comes back to the abiding That's and right. the word. So That's abide right. and my word remain in you. Well, it's, the, just, it's just cut clear. It's just everywhere. The reason why Jesus overcame the devil in his temptation was that he used the word of God. And it's the same thing we need to do. We have to use the word of God. So, what I want us to understand as we're finishing now that we need to understand. And and then verse 14 said, Jesus, the, Satan left Jesus for a season and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Isn't that amazing? He left him after all the temptation. Jesus was selected. He was separated into the wilderness. He was tested 40 days and 40 nights. He was he was hungry and, he, you know, God has delivered him and he overcame the temptation. Satan left him for a season and then Jesus depart with power in the, to Galilee to teach. Amen. I mean, I want to emphasize a point where it said, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. I just want to say that you're not going to be tempted all day, every day, forever. There are times when the devil just goes. He leaves you. He, he can only, all of his temptations will be based on, one, trying to get you to supply your own needs. So turning stones into bread. Two, the devil will always try to offer you things of this world. Power, glory, kingship, majesty, anything that satisfies your soul. Thirdly, he will also be asking you, sorry, secondly, within that, to get you to worship him. To get you to give him accolade, to honor him, to somehow lift him up high before God. The third thing the devil would do is try to get you to harm yourself or put you into harm's way to try to say, why didn't God protect you? Why doesn't God do something? Why doesn't God come through for you? Mm. Yeah, Those are the things that the devil will do. He will try to get you to tempt God. He will try to move you. That's all of his temptations. Those are the things that he brings to your soul. Those are the things that he brings to your flesh to try to deceive you. But I'm just saying, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And as we read through the, um, the, the Bible, you'll see the devil keeps coming back trying to offer Jesus the same things over and over again, trying to present him the same things, trying to present him the same things. And I'm saying this to so anybody listening. The devil leaves you, but he will return and offer you the same things over and over again in multiple ways. And so, we, and so we must not forget to abide. If you abide in me and my words remain in you, then you shall ask what it will and it shall be done. Abiding in Christ. Keep the word of God. If you and I don't have the word of God, Jesus made it as food. If you don't eat, you will die. Eat the word of God every day. Don't, 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 don't become so, take the word of God lightly. Respect it. Fear God's word. Tremble at his word. And abide in his word. After Alfred said this, we're going to be praying. Yeah, but, I'm, um, I'm just going to read from John 15 where it talks about abiding in, in, in God. And I'll just read it from, from the perspective of Jesus said in John 15. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, 
and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Absolutely. So Father, I just thank you for your word. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are the word of God. And in Revelation, you said that, God, that there will be a war. And the world will be fighting against him, which is the word of God. And your word has been proven and tested and tried from generation to generation. And it is flawless. Lord, I am so sorry for the time when I see your word so lightly. And I take your word so lightly, God. But now, Lord, by looking into the perfect law of liberty, I am seeing, O oh God, the importance of your word. I am seeing the treasure. It is greater than gold. It's, it's, it, is must, it must be desired than choices gold. Your word, O oh God, I love your word. It's sweet to my taste. Lord God, let not your word depart from my lips. Let not the word, God, of your mouth depart from me, because then I will be in darkness. I love light. I love your word. Your word is sweet to my taste. God, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for the power of your word, that your word has become flesh. It become man. It becomes something that it wasn't. It is everything. It is life. It is bread. It is water. It is I am that I am. Whatever it is, it is. Your word, O oh God, is settled in the heavens. It is proven and tried over and over. And Lord God, if we can only know your word and if we can only obey it, Father, I pray you will keep me to obey your word. Help me, O oh God, to plant it at the very center of my eye, in my heart. Let your word become, O oh God, the breath that I breathe. Let it become everything to me, Lord. And I pray, God, that those who are listening, they stay, God, that they will see the importance of your word and they will tremble at the word of God Almighty and they will fail to listen to Satan. They will obey your word. They will fear you. They will worship you. They will honor you, Lord God. They will fear you with all of their heart. Lord God, I pray that your word will be on their heart. Write it, inscribe it, O oh God, upon the very tablets of their heart. Let their heart be broken that is filled with stone, God. And write a heart of flesh on them, Lord, that they will obey your word and do your commandments. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for being here with your word, Lord. Lord, help us, O oh God, that every day that God, I will just spend more time wanting more of your word. I love your word. Thank you. For the life and the light that is given us right now. I love your word. And I just thank you for it. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Lord I just want to just read my prayer. Because I believe Lord that it's your will that must be done. It's your will that you desire for us. So I'll just read it Lord. That Therefore said the disciples unto one another. Have any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Father, let us do your will. Let our meat be to do your will, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.